Hey there guys, Cubby and Brandon here with your comic reviews this week. We have some, as always, Marvel, DC, and image books. We also have IDW, Boom, and Dark Horse. So read them up, or, or just listen to us talk about them. So Marvel now kicks off this week with Deadpool number one. I looked at the shelf and saw Brian Pesane writing it, so I had to pick it up. If you do not know, Brian Pesane is a comedian, and his comedic style is just perfect to write a Deadpool co a comic. I'm glad he got into writing comics along with uh, people like Patton Oswalt and stuff like that. Uh, if you didn't know, Tony Moore is drawing this book, and he's one of my favorite artists of all time. Uh, not just from Walking Dead fame, but also from Fear Agent and Venom and all the books that he does. He's an incredible artist, uh, but unfortunately he probably will not be on Deadpool for very long. He doesn't last on uh, big, big uh, titles for very long, so I'll just enjoy it while it lasts. Um, also, the Deadpool comic is full of everything you need in a, in a comic book. It's got uh, a Godzilla-like character with two sets of nipples, references to the Alien franchise, and let's just face it, Deadpool is meant for cheap jokes. So, I'm gonna give this book five out of five nerd skulls. He may not be the hero we want, but he is definitely the scumbag we need. Hey guys, I got to read Willow number one, and I know I've said this every single time that I've read, uh, reviewed a Buffy comic, and I am not a big fan of the Buffy comics, but this one, like Spike, uh, actually surprised me. Uh, it, it started a little bit slow, but it's definitely a lot better than what I've seen in the previous Buffy comics. Um, Willow was written well, and I like this journey that she went on. And basically, if you don't know what's going on in the Buffy, Buffy universe, um, all of the magic has disappeared from Earth, so she's trying to get it back. And we all know how much magic means to Willow, so it's definitely um, a good story point. And she meets this really interesting character, and it's called Wonderland. And I like that they address that they're kind of parodying Wonderland, so it's not just the same thing over and over again. They admit that they're doing it, and that kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. Um, I think my favorite thing was a one-page collage of kind of Willow's highlights from the show, and it was just really cool to see the show brought to art on the, on the page. So I'm actually gonna give this book four nerd skulls. What's up, nerds? I got to read Detective Comics number 14. Uh, we get Poison Ivy back as, I guess, a villain, uh, kind of in the way that I'm used to seeing her as sort of somebody that she thinks she's doing the right thing because she's looking out for the planet and all that, and she's just going about it the wrong way. But either way, this is a really cool issue. I like seeing Poison Ivy back as a rogue. I, I, I didn't really like her with the Birds of Prey, so it's cool to see her back in the fold of the Batman universe and with Batman fighting with him, trying to control him, whatever. And there's a really cool ending here with a villain and a backup story to explain how the villain is getting in that situation. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm giving it four to five nerd skulls. Check it out. Hey there guys, Kevin here with my comic reviews this week. I got to read Manhattan Projects number seven. And now, I had a big problem with this book. I, I love this book, I should say. This issue in particular was really good. This series has just been really awesome. But I had a big problem because I kind of didn't know what was going on like halfway through it. And like, I knew the story. I wasn't really fresh with it, but like, I, knew, I know the story, I know what's going on. And like, you're reading it and it's kind of like, what are they talking about? Oh my God, big words, science, 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 craziness, and then, it all starts to make sense and starting to fall into place and you're like, oh, okay, all right, all right, I see what they're doing there. And then one character says one word and it's kind of just like, what the balls just happened. Yes, what the balls just happened. That's, that's, what, that's how I felt. Um, but it was cool, it was really awesome. I love when a comic can do that and it's, it's hard for other comic companies to do books like that on a regular basis. Image, especially Manhattan Projects and Jonathan Hickman, he's just a good writer, he's a really good writer. So check this out. The artwork is great on it. There's a lot of great character progression and story progression in this. I'm really excited where they're going with this book, so I'm gonna give it five out of five nerd skulls, because it deserves it. Harvest number four came out this week, and if you don't know, I absolutely love this title, written by A.J. Lieberman, who is, I mean, incredible, and the artist, uh, Colin Lorimer, is really, really bringing it for this title. It's very uh, based on shading and everything like that, colorful artwork. Um, it's really, really cool. Uh, I want to suggest it to everybody, but unfortunately the next issue is going to be the last one, so you need to pick this up from number one. Obviously it's about a surgeon, uh, loses his job at the hospital because he's an absolute drunk, so he starts uh, harvesting organs on the side. Really, really good book. I'm going to give it five out of five nerd skulls. 
Hey guys, I read Iron Man number one, and I will admit from the very beginning that I don't normally read Iron Man, but I do know enough about Iron Man that I should have been able to follow it pretty well. But um, considering that this was part of the Marvel Now relaunch, I felt a little bit lost, mostly just because there were some institutions that, I, or one institution, that I wasn't sure if this was new to the storyline or if it already existed, and I don't really know if that was significant, but it was enough that it kind of confused me, and I was thinking about that so much so that it was harder for me to follow what was actually going on in the story. Uh, with that said, another problem that I had with it was that I just didn't really feel Tony Stark in it. I felt him a little bit in the beginning, but it felt forced. And the only really great moment, like really great, oh, this is Tony Stark moment, was the last page, which was really great, but I just wanted more. So I'm going to give this book three nerd skulls. I had a chance to read Animal Man number 14 this week, and I loved it. This is such a good book. It has been from the first issue. This rot world story is incredible. I can't wait to see where they're going with it. We got Animal Man, and you got everybody in the red, uh, John Constantine, Steel, Beast Boy. I, I love just the idea of this story, and I really like that if you're reading Swamp Thing as well, you're getting both sides of the red and the green taking on the rot, and the two of them trying to find each other and you know just come to a resolution on this. And I also like that we are seeing Buddy's family before Rot World and kind of what their fate is. So. Yeah, this is an awesome book. I'm giving it four to five nerd skulls. Pick it up. All right, guys, so I got to read Avengers number 33 as well this week. And I got to say, I have not really been keeping up on the Avengers as much as I should be. Um, they're a huge fan of them, but eh, just the books have kind of been a little weird. It's all the same story over and over and over again. And it, uh, there are a lot of couple, or a couple artists that were on there that I did not want to just look at. So I kind of fell out of it and, you know, just kind of decided to jump into this issue. It's It's... Hawkeye and Spider-Woman on the cover, and I know that Brian Michael Bendis is leaving. It, it's sad and sucks in a way, but at the same time, yeah, it's time for him to move on. But I don't like what they're doing in the characters they're bringing back. The, the story twists that he laid out in like previous events and stories that were awesome and cool and big and crazy, it, it seems like he's like putting it back to the way it used to be before he even touched the Avengers, and I don't like that at all because I feel he should make his imprint, his mark, and uh, yeah, people are gonna remember those stories, but I think he should leave something that no one will be able to mess up. And like, I know Avengers Mansion's back, and like the Avengers Tower is still gonna be there, but I really wish Avengers Mansion was still a ruin, and I, I don't know. It's kind of going off a tangent. This issue in particular, the artwork killed it, and it was awesome, but the story, I mean, it, it, it plays out like an Avengers story, and it's awesome and fun, but it's the same thing I've read a lot. So I'm only going to give it three and a half nerd skulls. And eh, I hope it gets better soon. I got the chance to read a new number one out of Boom Studios, Freelancers number one. I did not know what to expect coming into this title. Uh, but fortunately for me, uh, they get you, they push you into it really quickly. They, in my opinion, they really rushed you through the backstory of the characters. Um, it's basically a couple of girls who are now in present day grown up and they are. Uh, hit men of sorts, uh, hit women, I should say. Um, the backstory is that they were put in an orphanage when they were really young, but fortunately for them, it was an orphanage that teaches their orphans kung fu. Kind of a, uh, yeah, it's definitely got some holes in the plot line. I don't really know how far it's gonna go. I don't know if I like it yet. The art is pretty good though. So I'm gonna give it another chance, but uh, issue one, I'll give three out of five nerd skulls. Hey guys, I got to read Scarlet Spider number 11. Now this is my second time reading the comic, and the first time I read it was issue one, and this particular arc that I read, I was in part four. So I really didn't know what was going on, but I still managed to enjoy it. Um, part of it obviously has to do with the fact that Marvel tells you everything that happened, but also I just really was engaged by the interactions between the characters. I mean, the fact that you have Scarlet Spider and Carnage and Venom all together in this one story, it's constantly from page to page, there's something interesting going on. And I just really liked seeing all of these characters together in one world at one time. And it's really interesting to see that Scarlet Spider and Venom are both going after trying to stop Carnage, which is obviously, it's always great to see what Carnage is getting into. So I'm going to give this book four nerd skulls. I got to read Mars Attacks number five. 
Uh, this is a story about a general and the big alien invasion and basically about him taking on Earth and kind of being disgraced on Mars and it, it was okay. This was a really cool series to me when they first got announced. I was very excited for it. I, I'm not really sure what they're... I, I don't know. I guess I was kind of hoping for some one-shots. Maybe some... I, I don't see this as an ongoing. It, it's fun, but it's just not something that's been keeping me pulled in like I thought it would. I want to keep giving it a chance because I am a fan of the trading cards when I was little and the movie was awesome and I just, I want to keep giving this a chance but it's kind of losing its grip on me. I'm going to give it three out of five Nerd Skulls. Alright guys, so I got to read Moloch number one from the Before Watchmen series and I love this series so far. I've been really, really behind it. The Adam Hughes issues with uh, Dr. Manhattan, uh, The Minutemen with Darwin Cook. Really, really awesome stories. And J. Michael Straczynski's stories in particular have been really good as well. Um, I like this story. I like this issue. I like the character development. I like the... I, I, I don't feel it was necessary to give us the background on this dude. Um, it, he's kind of like a background character in the whole thing. And it doesn't necessarily mean anything to know how he came about, but on the other hand, it is a really good way of telling this guy's story and like it's really messed up, of course, I mean he's a super villain, you know, he's a crazy ears, he's been tormented, you know, he grew up in like the 30s and 40s. It, it sucks seeing this guy go through the stuff that he goes through and like you feel for him and you, you end up like, you know, having a little bit of sympathy for him, but it's, uh, it just doesn't seem like it's necessary. So. As much as I love it, and as much as Eduardo Russo's artwork is amazing, it's really, really good, and has some awesome, awesome, awesome scenes, um, it just, the story doesn't feel like it's necessary. It feels eh, great, but again, does not need to be there. So I'm only going to give it three nerd skulls, but eh, let me know what you guys think, because I just kind of felt... Uh, the most surprising comic on my list this week is Colder uh, by Dark Horse. It's a number one issue, so I dove right in. Uh, it's written by Paul Tobin, and the artwork is by Juan Ferreira, and I apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly, but it is probably some of the most incredible artwork I have ever seen. He did the, the cover and the internal art, um, and I was absolutely floored by this book. Uh, a true horror comic, it's about some kind of creature that climbs into our universe from uh, somewhere else that feeds, literally feeds, off of crazy people. Really cool uh, concept for the book, but like I said, the artwork is really what draws you in. The detail is insane, and this, if you haven't, if you see this cover behind me, I mean, absolutely insane. That's all throughout the book. It's amazing. I'm going to give Colder number one, five out of five nerd skulls. I'm adding it to my pull list. You should too. I got to read The Perhapanauts, number one. This series is back. I love this book. I always have. I picked it up a long, long time ago when it first came out. I'm glad to see that we are now back into the fold with them, a new series. You got the old team, explains kind of the gap and everything. I, I love these characters. I love this book. I, I love everything about it. Like This is so, so much fun to me reading this, and I'm so excited that it's back. I'm giving it four to five nerd skulls. Check it out. All right, so I also got to read Green Lantern number 14, and whoa, man. If you guys aren't reading Green Lantern, if you guys have not been reading Green Lantern, you need to start listening to us because I know all of us have been telling everyone to read Green Lantern. If you only read one DC book, Green Lantern, and it's still just as good, it's still just as many mysteries, and as soon as you find something out, as soon as something else gets resolved, another problem arises right away, and it's so fast and kinetic and, and action-packed. It's like the coolest movie you've ever seen. And now it's a, a, a new guy playing the main character role and it, it doesn't even feel like it's a different movie. It's all the same thing. The Justice League, we're in this issue. And there's awesome cool banter between everyone, the new Green Lantern. It's, oh, I'm just, I'm so excited about this, this whole series. I love where it's going. So much mystery behind it and like, a, a, again, another new person and like a whole new area to explore. So. I don't know. I can't talk enough good things about this book. Jeff Johns, Doug Mankey, you guys are doing amazing jobs. Keep it up. Keep up the great work. Five out of five nerd skulls. Easily the best book of all time. Or at least this week. 
All right, guys, that's all the comic reviews we have for you this week. But until next week, check us out on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and nerdlocker.com for all your nerdy news. I'm Brandon. I'm Cubby. We'll see you next week for more comic reviews. Word.